Thank you, future Abdul. We are here with the super fantastic fresh onto 6S. Watch out for him in your rear view mirror because he's coming up on top of the leaderboards. Mr. Revu, how are you doing, buddy? I have. Well, thanks for having me once again. I, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. So let's get right into this. Yeah, thank you for taking out the time. I've been a long people watching the stream, A Song of Pitch and Throttle over the past three years. We'll be tired of Abdul harping on about how it's the community that makes Liftoff the best simulator place to be. And we've got a global competition right now going on. Chapter number three, you had the ambition to be three places higher after your number six finish in chapter two, but you finished out at number nine. What are your feels about how does how do you deal with that as a as a race pilot? So I I don't think it's anything got to do with skill. Unfortunately, it legit has to do with the time I have to actually put into the simulator. I've been trying to fit in time to go and actually set times in the simulator, but this month has been hectic for me. I I can't believe I even got to set one single time at the point. And even at that, I figured out that my throttle wasn't giving me full. I was getting about 80% throttle instead of the 100%. So I was even slower. And I only found that out about a week and a half ago. <laughs> so I can set a better time if I wanted to. But I just don't have the time. After. I haven't even set a time in the newest, uh, the newest chapter yet. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to set a new time in the newest chapter. I just need to try and get the chance to set a, to get a good time. You're very right that in chapter 3 it was especially difficult to get in a time because while you had 8, you could store up to 8 tryouts, you only got them every other day. You had to wait 2 days and then put in a tryout. You had to wait 2 days and then put in your series of tryouts. Um, it's significantly different in chapter 4 though. You get 2 tryouts every hour, which feels very different having just 2 tryouts from having tried it i can tell you you crash out awfully fast uh, but we hope that you can get in get in some more more time and convenience um, and that's a good thing to note that it is difficult as a pilot to put in quality time while still balancing uh, balancing your everyday uh, everyday responsibilities so as part of that research given that you are part of that preparation and performance given you had a small amount of time did you do manage to do any research on how the other pilots were flying or did you just have time to, to, to do your own grind? I, when I was actually flying the Pro League, um, Fly started me off. We started off early, so we did practice lines and he spectated me and made some adjustments. And they're really the only adjustments I have made to my lines and stuff like that. I kind of knew how to fly it. I just needed to be consistent and obviously get the nice, nice quick line. Um, but I, I just didn't have the chance to even try and set a nice line. I got one time, uh, that was actually my only time I set in the in the whole race. I don't think I, I adjusted that at all. And that was at the very beginning at that. And then even at that, it was at 8% throttle. If I had 100% throttle, who knows? I could I could have dwindled down the time even more. Um, but by the time I actually had time to go in and set set times, the, the race was over and we're on to the new chapter. So. That, that's where I'm falling down. Uh, well, I hope you get, um, I hope you manage to find some more time. Plus, now that you found that 20% of throttle, like we were excited about chapter three and your performance in it because you got onto 6S. Uh, but now yeah. we found out you're approximately at the same lower power level. So chapter four, you should, people should really be watching out for Master Revu. What did you think was the hardest part of chapter three for you? Oh, the small little part where you have to go through where there's a line of lava and um, it's a tiny little cave. It's not the big cave you do a loop around. It's the one that you have to shoot straight after that. And there's a little peak. There's a little peak I always seem to hit and you just have to go a little bit to the left of that. And that, that always seemed to annoy me so, so much. Yeah, I, I hated that, that Star Wars style trench run with that little peak. I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and it was so very frustrating because when you'd hit it, there wasn't actually molten lava underneath you. So the quad would just skid around and land on the floor. You wouldn't even get the satisfaction of, you know, I destroyed it. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I, that was a tight, tight part. Very interesting that that one hurt you more than the big cave. Um, because the loop around the big cave was where a lot of pilots 
who had finished runs took it very conservatively um, and went wide. No, that I, I could actually put that really tight. I'm pretty sure I, if you look back, I don't know if it's in that time, but I got really good at cutting it tight. It was just, I think it was more than muscle memory than anything. It was actually trying to line up that second cave where, where it screwed me over. So that, that is certainly true of the line of yours that we saw for the actual number, uh, number nine run that you got that it's very tight that you didn't take a lot of space after you came out and there are people who are higher than you on the leaderboards who were taking that space after the uh, after the cave exit they'd go wide and then punch back way into the trench run and you went in on a nice smooth uh, racing line what do you think it is that these pilots have that's different um, that's giving them this extra 10 odd seconds above you in the leaderboard they have the time to practice. They have more skill above me. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not anyway the best out there. I'm intermediate at most. And um, as well as I said, the eight percent trial wasn't helping. Figuring out that I, I had more power in the bank, I could have used that. And also, I'm not sure if I should have been flying the big six S fat battery or the skinny battery, because I'm sure I, I was flying the skinny battery, but I don't know if that was actually enough to be able to punch full throttle at the end and make it out. So I'm not sure about that. I didn't look into that enough. Which also needs time for you to go in and experiment with it over and over and get exactly. quality runs in, right? And that that is true. A, a big part of it is, and it's just stick time, which you do need to put in the stick time. I can tell you one thing for sure, Z's brother Revu, your boy Abdul is an intermediate pilot. As I've been saying for years, at the best time, a low intermediate pilot. Uh, I happen to be uh, number one in my country, but that's just because it's a really small pond and there aren't a lot of people that fly here. Uh, so very much an intermediate pilot. I finished like number 31 in chapter three. If you finished at number nine, brother, that's, that's not, and especially with a dearth of practice and grind time, that's not intermediate, man. Yeah, I, I think a little bit more internal credit for Master Revu and just give it your best. That extra 20% for chapter four is there. And it, it's a it's a wide open track for chapter four. There aren't any, uh, with the exception of the last bit at the end that goes through the trees, there aren't really any punishing bits. Um, uh, and that there is a nice big wide open line in those trees, though we've already seen a couple of different strategies between people cutting it insanely tight and people going around. Be lovely to see what your strategy is. That extra 20% power, you're gonna feel it in that track. She wants, she wants that power. Um, do you have any? So, so trash talk is a big part of racing and competition, right? We used to see a lot of it from Captain Vanover way back in the day. What's your philosophy? What is your message, if any, that you'd give to the other pilots in the competition? If I had the time and if I had the hours to put in. I think I'd be up here in the first place. So, give, give me, give me time. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> well, we got twelve more chapters to go. Hopefully, soon the the months will ease for you, and we're gonna keep seeing Master Revu all the way out there on the top. Thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon, Revu, to be uh, to be to be part of this interview, and thank you so much for being part of our community. Um, which is so welcoming uh, for those of you who may be watching the interview and don't know FPV Fly, who uh, Revu mentioned uh, helped him out with putting uh, down his run, is one of the competitors in the race. He's one of the contenders and even the contenders, whether you talk to Fly, you talk to G-Man, you talk to Finzi, any one of the leaders of our community, everyone reaches out and gives love. Uh, your, you are very much the people that make this such a great place to uh, have fun and compete. Thank you for being you, Master Revel. Thank you very much. All the best for Chapter 4. We look forward to seeing your performance in the snow. And uh, let's bounce it back. Bye, now. Abdul. Bye, bye, Revel. Thanks for being with us. Let's bounce it back to future Abdul and the Song of Pitch and Throttle Studios. Back to you, buddy.